dying. I'm dying. I'm... <sighs> like, do you ever just, like... <sighs> I don't... I don't... I, it is, uh... <sighs> How do you explain emotions? <laughs> hey, mm. Okay, um... Oh, love. The closet in the background. Yeah, that's great. Okay, you know I'm gonna shut the door. I mean, the closet door. Like, because, like, just... Um, <laughs> um, so, I am tired of being in the closet. Like, I am just so tired of it. Like, there's this constant fear, like, all the time. And, like, being in the closet also makes you feel so insecure because, like, my sexuality is, like, a part of me. Like, it's a major part of me because... It's been a part of me since I was a kid. Like, I remember I would, like, um, it's actually really blurry because I was a kid at the time. But I remember it started off really young when I realized I like girls. And so I remember, I think my first kiss was when I was, like, six or seven. And I kissed this girl. And I was like, sorry. I tried to, like, <laughs> I tried to make it seem like an accident. <laughs> Like, I literally, like, just kind of, like, ran straight at her or, like, jogged and then just kind of kissed her and then, like, ran off. And then I was like, you know, I was trying to run to you to give you a hug and then it accidentally turned into a kiss. Yeah, like, that totally... <laughs> <laughs> like, it was so bad. <laughs> and I remember, though, she was my neighbor. And so, like, I had a crush on her for the longest time because, like, she was cute. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Like... In my eyes, she was cute. She's like blonde. She was like had a very like okay, you know those girls who have like straight blonde hair and they have the like the baby blue eyes and the freckles on their nose and stuff, and they like look angelic and they're pale and porcelain. They look like dolls. Like that's literally how she looked like. And I was like, she's adorable. Like there's no way she'd ever like me. She's straight. Like blah. I didn't even realize the concept of sexuality at the time. So I was just thinking like. I'm just weird. I like girls that I don't understand. And, like, all the other girls would always be like, Oh, my God, this guy, like, he kissed my cheek, like, blah, blah, blah. Or, like, he put my shoes on for me in kindergarten. And I was just kind of like, good for you. Like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> like, I was always attracted to girls first before men. And, <clears throat> like, or boys, whatever. Um, I mean, there are a few situations where I did have a crush on a guy, but, like, it was really, like, rare and it was kind of short and it didn't really last that long um so like yeah I think the majority of the time I'm mostly attracted to girls but now that I'm more mature like now I realize that like I like pretty much like everyone <laughs> not just girls but like when I was younger like it was primarily girls and I think it got worse after I was like raped because like just like the fear of men was like magnified so that didn't help but I was also trying to suppress it because like I felt um, anything sexual was, like, bad, um, after I was raped, so, like, yeah, that was, was a moment, um, a couple years of a moment, but anyways, back to childhood sexual stuff, um, well, not sexual stuff, it was just kind of, like, experimenting, but I always knew that I liked girls, and, um, I thought it was weird, so I didn't tell anyone about it, blah, 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 aside from, like, a few girls that I liked and was, like, kind of, like, um, <laughs> like, I would, <laughs> I would always, like, like, be, like, um, I remember a few times I would just tell them, and then they would be the one who, like, would initiate, like, the whole, like, getting, like, kissing or whatever, um, or making out or whatever, but, like, um, but, like, it was never that far, because, like, we were kids. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is so bad, like, I was literally a child. I was a child that I was doing this. Like, that's so bad. That is so bad. Like, what is wrong with me? Ugh. And then when I was, like, around 9 or 10, like, I think from around the time since I was, like, 9 to, like, 13, um, like, I just, like, hated anything sexual because of what happened to me, like, because I was raped. So, like, I suppressed, like, any, like, sexual urges or whatever. So, like, Whereas, like, that's normally the time where, like, little girls turn into, like, budding puberty and whatever. And, like, they start, like, experimenting and blah, blah, blah. And I was too afraid to experiment because I was terrified. So I guess that's a good way that I experimented when I was younger. I don't know. Um, 
But, like, throughout those, like, years, I just, like, couldn't stand anything, like, that had to do with sexuality or anything. I didn't even understand sexuality. Like, I just knew that I liked girls, and no, I didn't know anyone else who liked girls at the time, especially since we moved to that super conservative town. So, like, no one else I knew liked girls. And I thought, like, maybe the only reason that I like girls is because of, like, my fear of men. Like, maybe that's it. And, like, I just suppressed it for so long. Like, it must have been six years. First out of fear of my sexuality or, like, fear of, it, like, I don't know, like, fear of anything sexual. And then it turned into fear of admitting, like, that I was sexually attracted to a woman because, like, I didn't know anyone who was attracted to girls at the time. Literally, there was, like, no LGBTQ plus community at all in that little conservative town. Like, no one. No one. Um, I mean, there was, like, a few people who I suspect were, like, maybe gay or bi, but, like, they never, like, outed themselves. They never said anything. So, like, I was alone. <laughs> and, like, I didn't know what the fuck to do. I'm, like, so I suppressed it for, like, at least six years, just the fear of anything sexual at a young age, but then also, like, learning that, like, I was really different and, like, I was afraid of that. Um... Which I really wish that it could have been different because I could probably be, like, a lot less insecure and, like, shy and, like, afraid of, like, pretty much everything now. But, um, I don't really, um, like, I can't do anything about it. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, like, you can't change the past, so whatever. But, um, I'm just, like, tired of being in the closet, though. Because, like, I realize my sexuality... Or I started guessing my sexuality when I was, like, freshman year of high school. And then I discovered my actual sexuality, like, beginning year of sophomore year? I don't know. Like, it's it's a blur. Like, you know how bad my memory is? Like, guys, like, just don't question it. Um, <laughs> and so, like, I'm not entirely sure, but over, like, the past two years, I've discovered, like, that I, like, like both guys and girls, but then that, like, for both guys and girls turned into like of everybody and it went from bi to pansexual so i went from a little kid who knew she liked girls and didn't know why and like wanted to experiment and then to trying to be straight as hard as i could and like suppressing everything and then to thinking that i'm bi and then being pansexual realizing i'm pansexual <laughs> uh, yeah anyways so but now that I've realized it, it's, like, like, I feel so liberated because, like, finally, like, I know, I mean, my sexuality isn't who I am, but it is a big part of me. And it's, like, just nice to know that, like, um, I know, like, the what these, like, urges mean. And it's okay if you don't know these, like, what your, like, urges or whatever mean. Because, like, not everyone, like, discovers their sexuality, like in due time like they just like some people never understand their sexuality and like sometimes that's okay like it's okay if you don't know just like me knowing gave me security and it like it makes me feel better and like more of myself and um but the minute I understood like I was like so happy because like finally like I am like I understand now and it just like fits so well and like it made sense and um, it was, like, all of the confusing parts of my childhood slash teen, younger teen years or whatever, puberty, like, it makes so much sense, and, like, now I don't have to, like, be afraid anymore, um, or whatever, that's what I thought, but then I realized, wait, there are homophobic people out there, and there's, one of them happens to be part of my family, and I'm really afraid of disappointing him, and he's my dad, so, like, that's great. And, like, the fear was holding me back for so long, but, like, now I'm just tired of it. Like, I'm so tired. Like, I had this huge fear that he's gonna, like, run off and, like, fit, like once he finds out that, I like, my sexuality is gonna hate me. And, like, everything that we've built up, like, the trust and the love that we've built up, he's gonna, like, turn against me and, like, hate me and, like, blah, blah, blah. And, like, I'm terrified of that. But at the same time... I'm so tired of it. I'm so tired of being afraid. Like, I just wanted to get it over with. Like, I keep saying, I'm going to wait till I'm 18 so that I'm safe and secure. Whatever. Like, but, like, you can't guarantee that you're always going to be safe and secure. And, like, I don't know if he's going to be as extreme as kicking me out. And he can't really kick me out of Grandma's place, can he? So, like, there's not much else he can do other than avoid me. 
Um, and my first instinct when I'm afraid is to push people away before they can push me away. And that's what I'm starting to do with him. And I don't want to do that. Um, it's like every time we have conversations, I'm kind of like a little bit more defensive. And I kind of like judge him a lot and like just kind of like make everything that he does that's a mistake like I magnified it and I'm like oh this is one more reason that like where relationship like wouldn't even work even if he does accept me blah 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 and like just I'm trying like I can feel myself pushing him away and it's really difficult because I love him and like I don't want to push him away but that's like my instinct to push someone away before they can push me away and hurt me so like my first instinct is to hurt someone else before they hurt me which is really bad but like that's just what I've always done and um whether with bullies or whoever um I don't know it's 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 probably not very good but whatever um (laughs) like I can't really change it I mean maybe I don't know um so but I'm just like tired because I can feel myself pushing him away and like becoming dispassionate towards him and like impassive and like just like not like I'm like shutting myself off from him I'm like building a wall between us because I know that when I come out he's gonna hurt me but I'm trying to lessen that hurt by pushing him away beforehand and I don't want to do that and but the fear is like forcing me to and I don't want it to and I'm tired of like having to deal with it all the time and like the fear of like saying one wrong thing and like I don't know, even in public, I know this is irrational, but, like, I have a fear that, like, um, like, like, just, like, that no one's gonna defend me if I come out and, like, there's just gonna be, like, a mass of people who are, like, you're a faggot, like, you blah, 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 like, all this shit, and, like, they're gonna hurt me and, like, abuse me, and, like, I, I don't want to deal with that, and, like, I'm terrified of that, and, like, so, like, public coming out, like, it's, I mean, it's irrational fear because I know, like, especially in California, it's so liberal, like, people would defend me even if they don't know me because that's just how our generation is right now, which is great, but I still have the irrational fear that, like, I'm going to get hurt, and I know I'm going to get hurt, like, you can't possibly protect yourself from getting hurt all the time, but, like, I'm trying to lessen it as much as possible, and by lessening it as much as possible, I'm, like, creating distance from people that I love, and it's, like, I don't want to. And I'm, like, trying not to, but it's really hard not to. And... I don't know, I'm just tired of, like, living in fear and, like, trying to hide myself. And, like, I want to come out to my dad, but, like, again, like, not the perfect timing because he's in Honduras. But, like, I'm just so tired of dealing with this, like, guilt and fear all the time and, like... I just want to get it over with. And, like, if he's going to hate me, he's going to hate me. Like, there's nothing I can do about that. And I just, I'm tired. (laughs) I'm so tired of holding back and, like, pushing him away just because I'm afraid of his reaction to something that's been a part of me since I was a child. Like, since I was born. Like, it wasn't something that I just decided. I mean, I discovered it, but it's always been a part of me. And, like... I'm sorry if you don't approve of who I'm sexually attracted to, dude, but, like, I love, like, people, like, and I don't care if you don't approve of that, because, like, it's who I am, and, like, I'm not gonna stop being myself for you. Um, I'm, like, (sighs) I want to tell him so bad, but I feel like it's (sighs) so, like, it's the perfect timing for me, but it's not the perfect timing for him, and it's never going to be the perfect timing for them, and I'm just going to have to accept that, but, like, I'm ready, like, I'm so tired, and I feel like this is, like, my way of, like, getting rid of, like, one less, like, shame that I have on top of me, because I feel like I have, like, a pile of all of my mistakes and shame and guilt and everything, like, on my shoulders constantly, and it's always weighing me down, And, like, if I could do anything to alleviate it, I think it's first starting with myself and stop being so afraid and, like, start opening up more. And, (laughs) um, 
And I need to start doing that with my dad because he's the closest to me. He's the closest person to me that I'm the most closed off from. And he doesn't even know it. And I need to tell him. And it might not be the best conversation. Um, I probably will cry. And it might be on the phone and it might be in a different country. Or I might decide to take the cowardice way out and wait till he comes home or wait until my birthday. But I need to tell him and I want to tell him now, but like I, my fear and like, just like the placement is just like always being like, but this and this and this, like not the right time, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, like, just tired of it I'm like what if something happens to him in Honduras and he dies like it forever thinks that I'm like his perfect little angel angelic daughter who's like straight like I'm not that and I'm like if he dies or something like I, I'm gonna forever have that on my guilt and like just <sighs> I I can't like handle like holding this anymore like it's too much like I can't keep hiding from him anymore and I'm not gonna so like I'm gonna like open up to him and like tell him but like that's gonna be a really tough conversation holy shit it's gonna be too hard because <laughs> with my mom it was easy because like my mom loves me to the point of like slight upset she's getting better though my mom is getting way better like she was even talking to me about how she was okay if I like didn't love her anymore and that's unheard of because that was one of her classic guilt things when I used to live with her like you're gonna move away from me and you're gonna hate me and blah 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 like I can't live without you blah 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 and now she's talking about like the possibility of living without me and like that's like I mean it kind of hurts because like in some sick way I kind of actually really appreciated her almost obsessive love but I knew it wasn't healthy and I knew that it was wrong and it's also like very constrictive and like bad but like some part of me was like well at least I know she'll never leave me and she'll always love me um, which I don't have that constellation with anyone else in my family and, or friends really either. And I always had that with my mom. And then, so now like that I know that she's moving on, like I don't have it, but like, it still doesn't matter. Like love is all about risk and like, like overcoming things. So like, I should just like not always be dependent on my mom's like love and stuff. I should be dependent more on myself and like taking care of myself than depending on others and I'm trying and it's like really difficult but like I don't want to depend on society and I don't want to depend on others anymore because it's like it's so hard and it like every time I do I get hurt even unintentionally and I'm just tired of it it's like <sighs> also I found out recently I'm not an introvert and I'm not an extrovert I just happened to be the fucking middle ground. Like, literally, I took a test and it said, you're both. Like, you're literally, like, you're an introvert depending on the situation and you're extrovert also depending on the situation and, like, group and, like, the surroundings. And I was just like, well, fuck me. Like, no wonder I'm so fucking confusing. Like, mm. ugh. Oh, also, I completely forgot about the whole neck cussing thing. I'm, like, trying not to cuss as much. I've mentioned this many, many, many times. <laughs> it's not working, clearly. <laughs> um, yeah. But, like, yeah. Basically, I don't know if I'm, like, gonna call my dad today or not. Or, like, just tell him. Because, like, I, I'm tired of it. Like, I'm so tired. I'm, like... There's also a fear of me, like, telling him and him being like, oh, I don't want you to visit me in Honduras now. And I'm going to be like, well, that sucks. But, I mean, I don't want to be with him anymore and, like, have to deal with the guilt and the hiding. It's it's so exhausting. Like, you don't get how exhausting it is. <sighs> I'm just... I'm kind of glad that I'm single, though, because, like, if I was in a relationship, I would have double the guilt and shame because, like, I would be hiding someone else from my family who I could possibly love or something, which I don't want to do, so, like, yeah. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to date anyone until I come out, which I'm coming out the next time I call my dad. 
Hopefully. Hopefully. If I don't chicken out. If I don't chicken out. I really hope I don't chicken out. But, like, the biggest steps in our lives are the ones that we're most afraid of. And it's also really sucky because that means that every major decision that I'm going to make in my life from my past and from here on forward, I'm going to be the most afraid of. And it's always going to be bad. And I'm always going to be terrified to make the decisions that are going to change my life for ever but mm, you have to do it you have to do it <laughs> <clears throat> yeah <laughs> uh. oh it's fitting today is pride month and every time i see an lgbtq video or whatever just like stab of guilt stab of guilt stab of fucking guilt hi Yeah, it's... Uh, I should be fortunate, though. Like, my dad is not as extreme as some other families. Like, and not everyone in my family is homophobic, so I have that going for me. Um, and I don't live... There are sort of third world countries where, like, literally, like, just so much as having a gay flag or, like, saying anything gay, just, like, you, you're signing your death warrant or whatever and like you die and like they torture them and like just like it's so awful and like I have so much to be thankful for to live in the country and state that I live in and to have the family that I have despite my dad's and I's differences and beliefs like the feeling that he'll grow um eventually like it might be when he's on his deathbed and he finally learns to accept me or it might be a few weeks months or years after I come out to him, but, like, I'm pretty sure he's gonna, like, learn, hopefully sooner rather than later, though, because I, I, I just don't understand how he can live with, like, that hate. Like, I don't understand how you can hate someone just being who they are, but I don't live in a homophobic's brain or body, so, like, I don't know. <sighs> One good thing about this generation, though, like, we're very accepting. And, like, we're way more understanding and open than a lot of other generations before us. And we're a lot less, like, restrictive and, like, confining than other religions. And, I mean, generations. But at the same time, we also, like, once we have an idea, like, we don't want to let that idea go. And, like, we are stubborn as shit. As fuck. But, like, eh, like, it's, uh, like, it's, it's, uh, like, uh, <laughs> like, it's okay, I guess. I don't know. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> coming out story. Only, it has to be coming after story. Coming out story after you've come out. This is, like, the pre-coming out story, I guess. Which I've talked about a lot. But, like, it's, I'm just tired, like, like, I'm so tired of it, though, like, I'm just, ugh. I'm already ashamed of, like, a lot of things about me, but, like, this is one thing that I know I shouldn't be ashamed of, but I still am, and, like, I'm pissed at myself because of that, but, like, also at the same time, like, I can't help it, and I'm just kind of, like, trying to get over it, uh, it's, it's a struggle, though. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. <laughs> um, also, in the back of my mind, I have, like, these stupid doubts and fears that, like, my friends won't back me up as much as I want them to. And, like, that's stupid because, like, I know my friends. Like, I know, especially the close ones that I have. Like, like if they're anything like how I love them, like, they, they would, like, literally, like, well, I don't know. They love me as much as I love them. But, like, I would probably kill myself if I had to, like, protect them, which is kind of ridiculous and, like, crazy to say, but, like, it's true. And... I don't know if they would do that for me. And, like, I know that they love me and I love them, and, like, I would, like, defend them as much as I could, but I don't know if they would do the same for me. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I haven't talked to them in a long time. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Plus, 
all three of them are really like kind of like reserved and shy so like i don't know if they have like the strength in them to like fight and stuff because i'm kind of like the defender and like the protector and most of my friends like with most of my friends i'm like i don't know like once their protectors weak would they be able to help me if i was in a place that needed help and needed their strength because they have their own kind of strength but like i don't I don't know if, like, their strength would be enough to, like, hold me up when I'm down because, like, I don't know how much they love me. And, like, I don't know. I sound, like, really clingy right now. Hi. <laughs> um. Yep. Yeah. It's probably bad how much I love people because I'm, like, honestly, I could give no, sh like, I could give less shits about my life. But, like, other people's lives I care a lot about, especially the ones that I love. And so I'm kind of very self-sacrificing, which is not good. <laughs> um, <laughs> because I get walked over a lot. And I'm, like, learning to be, like, to care about myself more. But it's, it's hard. Um, but I think coming out to my dad will be... A step towards that goal of loving myself unconditionally as much as I love the other people that I love too and putting myself first rather than them but then I also every time I put myself first I feel guilt because I'm just like but they need love too and like if I use too much of my love for myself like they're not gonna have enough love and like this like irrational childish fears and like just <sighs> it's bad <laughs> um Everyone talks about self-sacrifice as, like, this noble thing. And I'm just, like, once you're willing, like, once you know you're a self-sacrificing person, like, it's not a good feeling. Like, it's, I mean, it's, it's just hard to live with the fact that, like, you don't care about your life. But, like, you care way more about other people's lives. And, like... That's not the best feeling, because, like, it just, I don't know how to explain, like, like, it's just not good. Even though society tries to make it, like, sound like this, like, noble and, like, just cause, and, like, it's so good, like, it's, it's not, though. It's not, like, it's, <laughs> you need to serve yourself before you can serve others. I'm, like, I'm learning that, but, like, it's kind of fucking hard, so, like, I'm working on it. <laughs> um... I'm way closer to it than I was two years ago, or even just a few months ago. But like, eh, it's still hard. Okay, also, this video is starting to close down on me. So like, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna say goodbye now, bye. Give me luck or whatever. Good luck me? Good, give me luck? I don't, how do you say good luck? Like, how do you ask someone to give you good luck? I don't know. <laughs> okay, bye.